Hi y'all. Today I want to talk about how to create the best web images. When I get asked by clients how to create web images for their blog or website, I generally point them to Canva, the outstanding web-based freemium image editor. My youngest daughter is a blogger and I taught her about Canva. She was amazed that her old mom had taught her, a 29-year-old, about a piece of useful technology. I use Adobe Creative Suite apps, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe Photoshop to create and edit my own images, but those apps are expensive and have a steep learning curve. Canva is an excellent alternative. Why do images matter? Websites are full of images that help tell your story and illustrate your copy. Web images break up large bits of copy and can, can help attract reader eyeballs. With Google's increasing emphasis on site speed as a ranking factor, it's not only important to have beautiful professional images on your site, but it's vital to optimize the images for fast loading. There are two basic types of images, raster and vector. A raster image is made up of pixels and cannot generally be enlarged significantly. If you try to enlarge a raster image, it will become blurry and pixelated. A photograph is an example of a raster image. Vector images, as described by Adobe, are built by mathematical formulas that establish points on a grid. They can be infinitely resized without losing sharpness or clarity. An example of a, a vector image is a logo or a piece of line art. When do you use which format? With the exceptional logos, most images you'll find on a website are raster images. That's because many, if not most, of the images you see on websites are photographs. There are two basic raster image formats you'll see used on the web, JPEG and PNG. If your image needs transparency, it needs to be a PNG file. For example, you can use this format for your logo. Any image, you, any image you'd like to appear without a background should be a PNG. A JPEG image is compressed to reduce file size and therefore increase load speed. You'll see a noticeable size difference between a PNG and JPEG, even with the very same image. My oldest daughter sent me this beautiful Pacific Ocean sunset image. I saved the image twice, once in JPEG format and once as a PNG file with identical pixel dimensions, 1000 by 750 pixels. The JPEG version is only 62 kilobytes while the PNG version is almost one meg. Unless you need transparency, use JPEG. The exception to that is a relatively newer format called WebP, which loads faster than both JPEG and PNG. Some WordPress speed optimization plugins convert all images to WebP. As of now, many Im image editing programs won't work with WebP images. You can easily convert them free at convert.io. There are numerous similar sites, most of which are free. You'll find them with a simple Google search for Web to, WebP to JPG converter. For vector image, SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics, is the optimal format. It generates a smaller file, preserves scalability, and yields a sharp, clear image. However, WordPress doesn't allow SVG uploads because they can be insecure and open your site up to vulnerabilities. If you want to use SVGs with WordPress, you'll need to install the SVG Support plugin, which allows you to upload SVG images. For security purposes, check the box that disallows anyone except an administrator from uploading SVGs and only use, use images you create or from trusted sources. How to create and edit images for the web. One place that bigger is not better is on the web. Save your images only to the size you need them. Be sure your file sizes are substantially below one meg. You generally don't need images larger than 2500 pixels and you don't need resolution above 72 pixels per inch. If you have Photoshop, open the image and go to image, image size, and 
let me put this on pixels, and I see that this image is 4,032 pixels wide. Well, we know we don't need anywhere near that many pixels. So I'm going to save this. I want to go to File, Export, Save for Web, Legacy, and I'm going to enter, first of all, I want to know, make sure that this is a JPEG file and I'm going to enter 1,000 pixels wide, which is enough for where I'm going to post it. It's wide enough. And then I'm just going to click Save. I want to put it on my desktop and I'll just name it sunset2.jpg. I can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift Option Command S. That's on Mac. On Windows, it would be Alt Shift Control S. If you're going to use Canva, you just uh, once you've logged in, just click on Create a Design. And for our purposes, we're going to do a custom size. And let's just say we want it to be a thousand by seven fifty, and then Create New Design. Now, I have already uploaded this image to my Canva, and all I really need to do is just drag it in here, and it'll snap to the sides, and just pull it that way. Now, I just have to click Download, and I can select here, JPEG, and click Download there, and I'm ready to go. I've got this vector image of a computer with a blank screen. I've got this open in Adobe Illustrator and I've already set up a background so that we can tell that this is a vector image and it has no background. And I'm just going to set this purple as the background and you can see you just see the computer and the outline. There's no white background around it. Now if I get rid of this and it's the very same command in Illustrator as it is in Photoshop, except this time I have to save it as a PNG. Now notice the little checked, very small, there's a checked pattern here, but in the very, in the background, notice this checked pattern. And that, what that means is that that's a transparent area. That means that you will not have any color in that area. If you get to this point and you're saving it as a PNG file, PNG-24 in Illustrator, and you've got a solid background here and not these little check, this little checked grid, then something's wrong. And again, I can specify my width, and then I can save this as a PNG file. And the process is very similar in Canva. All you have to do is upload, upload the file just as you would for an image or any other files that we've uh, worked with and then save it as a PNG. Now, if you're going to use an SVG file in Canva, you have to, uh, you have, to have a paid account. So that will give you a sharp vector graphic, uh, an SVG. But again, remember, um, there are some content management systems, especially WordPress, that will not allow you to, up to upload those um, without a special plugin. Use a free service like tinypng.com to further optimize your images for display on the web. It's easy to upload them, compress, then download the newly optimized images. If you use WordPress, use an image optimizer plugin like WP Smush or Imagify to slim down your images even more and make your page load faster. Thanks for watching and please follow me online at Beth G. Sanders on Twitter, Beth G. Sanders online on Facebook and Instagram, and please click down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Have a great week.